Yellowstone supervolcano, cracks are appearing in the rocks near the caldera, but from what scientists are saying, it's normal. You don't need to panic. And we'll see some of the uh, GPS deformation, what's happening there and where that's happening. Rangers temporarily closed off parts of Grand Teton National Park a couple of years ago after they noticed growing fissures in the area. Since Grand Teton is connected to Yellowstone, and Yellowstone is well known for sitting on top of what could be the giant volcano, which is a ticking time bomb or a sleeping Godzilla. News runs uh, with alarm bells, but it really shouldn't. Of course, Yellowstone National Park is in the U.S. state of Wyoming, the northeast section of it, overlapping into Montana and Idaho. And uh, it happens to be perched on top of the magma plume equivalent of a powder keg, and if it blew to into a super eruption, we could expect the U.S. to have a new belly button and a climate event that would disrupt global, global civilization for a while. So it's understandable that people are anxiously looking out for signs of such an eruption. The exhumed guides noticed cracks in the rocks in uh, Teton Park, and uh, the spokeswoman, Denise German, said they communicated that to rangers and when they went to investigate, they realized it had actually gotten bigger and expanded. And according to German, the cracks were a noticeable difference to the usual fractures at around 100 feet in length and running along a rock about 100 feet high in an area called Hidden Falls. Rangers sealed off that area from concerns that tourists could be crushed should a wall collapse, of course, uh, the landslides. And, of course, they were uh, investigating this. So it was a good call. But it's a sign that Yellowstone is yawning or is it snoring? Well, Grand Teton does not uh, technically sit on top of Yellowstone's magma chamber. The whole area is prone to ground movement thanks to geological activity. So a few cracks here and there should not come as a surprise. And we know that uh, there is a magma plume that runs from Baja California straight through Utah into Wyoming, so and then makes a right turn west under Idaho. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. So these are actual pictures of the cracks in the area, as you can see. Well, the earth is growing. We know the earth is growing at the rate of the growth of a human fingernail every year. Some areas faster than others. Now, the visible fissures splitting through the rocks would certainly make a dramatic opening in a Hollywood blockbuster, but there is uh, every reason to think of the nearby supervolcanoes doing anything unusual. USGS said we would be uh, well on top of it because, of course, they're monitoring the volcano. And here you can see an aerial view of that crack. Now still, it's not a cause to have your bags packed and one eye on the horizon, or a reason to think a few cracks are heralding the big one for Yellowstone. This by Mike McRae on Science Alert. Let's go to the GPS for Yellowstone to see what's going on there. Okay, here we are at Geodesi, and this is the area of Idaho, Montana, Salt Lake City, but uh, let's. this is the way the uh, mantle plume goes into uh, Yellowstone. It comes from Baja California, like this, and into, uh, through yeah, uh, Nevada, Utah, Montana, right there, that's Yellowstone, and then uh, makes a, a west turn into Idaho. That's, uh, it's a Y-shaped plume, and uh, the western part goes under San Andreas and the Walker Lane Fault System, all that magma, and the eastern part goes through Nevada, Utah, into Wyoming, into Montana, Wyoming, and then turns uh, west into Idaho. So let's go and see some of the deformation there. And uh, let's go to uh, Salt Lake City, we know it has about 16 volcanoes in that area so it that that has volcanoes as well but let's go here 
Well, most of these are south of the lake. So let's go around here. Um, I should have put on the satellite. Okay, this is going uh, southwest, and it's somehow deflating, inflating, deflating, inflating. Okay. Let's go uh, to this to the satellite images. Okay. okay, that's because that area is, uh, of course, lake area, so that is not very stable. Let's go to this one, P one eighty one oh eight. That's inflating, as we can see there. That's inflating. Okay, that's where the magma plume comes from. And let's take one here, which field? That's not a good one. That's not a good one. Sorry. Let's take one a little bit more further south. And this is it's going southwest. And that's pretty steady to deflating. Let's go to Yellowstone now. Yellowstone. This is the way the mantle plume goes. And into uh, Idaho Falls. Yellowstone right here. This is the area. And I think better this way. And the lake is here, under all those GPSs. This, this is the lake. It's over the caldera. This is the caldera. And the lake sits over it. Let's go. One of these. LDGE, that's not good. Let's take another one. Hopefully that's better. That's not good either. What's happening here? Well, does it show, uh, that shows deflation. Okay. Uh, let's take one here. Most of the uh, quake swarms are happening on the northwest, but let's take one here. HV. Oh, oh, okay, that's a good one. Okay, it's going southwest, and we have all types of inflation from 2005 inflation, turning on in 2009 to deflation, 2014 inflation. 2016 and then de deflation now that's a huge change okay let's go to the areas around the um, that's hebgen lake we'll see that too but there's not that many gps's around here where we have most of the quake swarms p714 it's going southwest and that's inflating it's also seasonal but you can see it's inflating and Let's go to, uh, this is not good, but that's not a good one. Okay. Let's go to one in um, Montana. P460, southwest, and it's inflating a little bit. Let's go to uh, Hebgen Lake now. That's where we had the big earthquake of 7.3 uh, in August of 1959 which was uh, causing landslides there. This is going southwest, and it's really inflating. Southwest, and it's really inflating, as you can see. That's Hebgen Lake. And let's take one here. Did we take this one? Okay. That's inflating. And this one here. That's not a good one, but it shows it's inflating. Let's take one north of Hebgen Lake. And again, that's inflating. All the area around Hebgen Lake is inflating. That's Hebgen Lake right there. That Z-shaped thing. Let's take one around um, here. Near the caldera. It's the caldera. P680. It's going southwest. And it's slightly inflating. Okay. Let's go to the middle of the caldera around here. P716. It's going southwest. And that shows uh, it's pretty steady to deflating. Okay, so we have most of the inflating areas around the northwest where we have our quake swarms. A lot of quake swarms there. This is inflating as well. P712. So, as you can see, that area is inflating. Let's go to Idaho. Craters of the moon in Idaho. You can see beautiful lava flows there. Look at this. Pristine looking. Look at these lava flows. This is Idaho. 
in the Snake River Plain. Here, 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 here. Let's take this one. Craze of the Moon. It's going southwest and it's inflating, deflating, inflating, deflating. It's now in a, an inflating phase since 2020. And let's take one here, Atomic City. It's going southwest and that's uh, deflating to inflating. So these are pretty active as well. So this is what's happening in Yellowstone. It's normal that with all this inflation and deflation, you would have earth cracking. But it doesn't mean that it's dangerous. This is a normal procedure for Yellowstone. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.